So, Mrs. Chairman, thank you for your kind of introduction. Good morning, dear ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and audience. As it was already mentioned, my name is Carolina Salvadori, and today I would like to tell you some work about the project which I'm working on, and this presentation therefore would be dedicated to electrochemical induced leakage of sulfur imide. So, for today, I have prepared this brief presentation where I would like to start with some introduction. Then I would like to focus on various sulfon imides, and the last part of this presentation will be, of course, dedicated to the conclusion. So, let's start but with sulfon amide. Sulfon amide are really popular motif in medicinal chemistry, in organic synthesis, and are also really important for me as a supramolecular chemist. They are biologically active, and they are also uh, usually used in supramolecular structures because of their strong hydrogen bond donating ability. Therefore, it's really important motif. And if you want to prepare sulfon amide, you would utilize the nucleophilic substitution of your corresponding sulfon chloride with amine in the presence of base. And if you start with aliphatic amine, you will be really successful. Your problem, uh, you won't have any problem and your yield will be about 100%. But if your choice be the aromatic amine, you may be have to face some challenges such as prolonged reaction time and also the formation of the viper. And me also in my mixture, I found this sulfon imide, but this is so beautiful structure. And I decided to study its electrochemical properties. So I prepared this byproduct in a higher scale. Okay. okay. Just let the money. Perfect. Thank you. So, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about the present. Ah, okay. So when I prepared the silicon amide, I decided to study its electrochemical behavior. And if we look in the structure, we can see it's really simple. And according to us, the most easily reducible motif should be the nitro group. And the nitro group is reduced in four aprotic solvent in two separated steps. Firstly, formation of a radical, which is the perzible step. And then this step is subsequently followed by free electron for proton reduction up to a hydroxyl amino stage. But when I measured, oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, but when I measured the polarography, free reduction step. Never mind, I think it's okay because sometimes when you look in the literature, you can find that when the molecule bears more than one nitro group, this nitro group can be reduced separately by formation of first radical and the second one. But then I measured cyclic voltammetry. And as you can see, the first step was completely irreversible. So I was preoccupied and I asked about my colleagues what they think about it, and no one can explain this phenomenon. So I decided that I have to explain this strange behavior. So I started with potential control electrolysis to explore what is happening there. So here in this photo, you can see in an event the original sulfon amide. And behind that, you can see the H cell where the electrolysis is proceeding. And you can see a huge difference of the color during the electrolysis. And then I decided to analyze what is happening there. So first of all, I did, of course, PLC plate. I find two spots and no one was of the sulfon imide. Then I combined these with mass spectrometry and I found out the molecule during the first irreversible step accepts two electrons and the acceptance of those two electrons involves the split of the molecule. When the deprotonated sulfon amide is formed with nitrobenzen sulfonate. And I also look to the NMR of the crude solution and we can see that the conversion was 100%, I was really happy and I decided to isolate the corresponding sulfon amide by acidic workup and then using preparative PLC plate. Then after this, I was really happy that now I know what is going on. I decided to try uh, utilize 
other different working uh, to arrangement of the experiment. But this is not really important because my time is limited and I would like to discuss other silicon images that I choose and prepare for my study. So first of all, so let's see in detail. So first of all, I think about what the, let's say, uh, substituent in para position of aniline motif, how it could affect such an electrochemical splitting. So I have prepared three different, so, sorry, silicon imide. And as you can see, here are the value of cathodic potential, which corresponds to the splitting uh, of the molecule. And they are practically the same. And then when I proceed the electrolysis, oh, I have obtained corresponding silicon amide in really sufficient yield, but nothing really special happened here. So I decided to do another change in the molecule. And I decided to introduce into the molecule different sulfonyl motif, uh, different from paranozil, and to compare it with it. And here we can see that I have prepared five molecules, and we can see that ortho substitute molecule didn't induce any measurable changes. However, as a, let's say electron donating ability of those substituents increased, the splitting potential was shifted to more negative value, and it would cause some problems then you have to think about the use of your working electrode, supporting uh, electrolyte, but nevertheless, the splitting, when you choose the right condition, works pretty well. Then I have think about, okay, until now I was playing, but what to prepare something interesting. And I have prepared also those derivatives, which contain two different sulfonyl groups. One of them was always and the other was of my choice. So I prepare those three motifs, and we can see that the splitting potential returned to the low value. And then I applied electrolysis, and I have selectively removed the nozzle motif. So this uh, could be applied, for example, for a synthetic chemist to use the nozzle motif as a protection group for sulfon amide because you can easily remove it electrochemically related. Then I am a supramolecular chemist. So I would like also some application, but for me. And I have think about, if you remember at the beginning, I told you that we supramolecular chemists love sulfon aminic hydrogen because it's highly acidic and it coordinates an island and such a beautiful structure, which we can see here. And I tried to prepare it synthetically, as well as by utilizing our simple electrochemical protocol. And here we can see the results. By classical synthesis, I have obtained such a set yield. I was, wasn't really satisfied, but by applying simple electrochemical cleavage, I was able to prepare this structure in overall 80% yield, which is amazing. And I'm not a good synthetic chemist at all. So then I also tried to study other geometry because when you study calyx aline, you can uh, choose also other uh, anthropoisomer alcohol and I tested them for everything. It works pretty well, but because I think that I already talked too much, please, I would like to conclude this talk. And I hope that today I have explained why it's important to study electrochemical properties on molecular level, even in such a simple motif. And uh, today I have shown you that nozzle group can be used as an easy removable chemoselective motif, and that we can apply this principle also for supramolecular chemistry. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, before I quit, I would like to acknowledge my fantastic supervisor as well as my best supervising experts and me and my electrosaurus. We would like to thank you for your kind of attention. And now it's time for your questions. Thank you much. Okay, thank you for your presentation and thank being you. on time perfectly. So does anyone have any questions? Can you go in? Unless you can explain in some simple way, how can you say from cyc uh, cyclovoltaic rate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
that a step is uh, you have to test the different uh, scan rate of your cycle and uh, well, uh, let me show you in the picture maybe better here you have to test different scale and when for example here is reduction peak and when you didn't observe the redox couple which is for example here you can say that the peak is irreversible so and the, the process and the, the are irreversible the first step one. is irreversible then when the molecule was split it you form as I already mentioned, nitro benzene sulfonate with the proton of the sulfur amide, but and then those are reduced firstly reversibly. Yeah. Any other questions? I don't have questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will have a more stupid question because this is they are not far, stupid far away from my expertise, but uh, so can you just simply explain? What is the potential application of what, what of, of your uh, as I mentioned at the beginning here in my case uh, the formation of this sulfon imide in the reaction was uh, about ten percent only but then I looked in the literature and sometimes it's more than thirty percent and this is uh, the thing what the chemist would like to obtain so the mixture of sulfon amide. In the presence of sulfon imide. And I already tested if it's possible to not separate the mixture and to only cleave the sulfon imide from the cruised solution, and it is still possible. So, it, well, okay, it is I'm sorry, <laughs> but I would like to make one more step about it okay. a little bit. So, what, what, what is this used for or could be uh, used for in sulfon imide are popular, for example, in many biological active molecules such as drugs mm -hmm. and. Uh, when they are prepared, you will obtain this mixture. Okay, so we can help to improve the your synthesis yeah. of some yeah. drugs. Or and something. the other thing is for to introducing, uh, let's say, multiple sulfon emitic motif inside the molecule, mm -hmm. because uh, when you have more than one reaction center, uh, you will definitely obtain the mixture. Mm -hmm. So as I during the uh, preparation of uh, calyx area, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So okay, thank you. So any other questions? No. Okay. So thank, thank you, you so much. much. So now I we have to uh, make a little step in the in the program. So I would like to invite now uh, Mr. Alash Kirchu with his presentation after the will be given the original second presentation. And uh, so Mr. Alashkirche will talk about synthesis and cytoplasticity of fluorinated monosaccharides. So can I start? Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please allow me um, to present to you my presentation on topic synthesis and cytotoxicity of chlorinated melodomines. My name is Alex Kachil, and my supervisor is Dr. Mujik Kata. Firstly, I'd like to tell you something about the background of my project. Uh, I've been working with foreign carbohydrates, it means uh, saccharides, uh, where this one deoxyl group is replaced by chlorine. Foreign carbohydrates have been widely acknowledged uh, as a tool for studying the uh, mechanism of uh, carbohydrate processing enzymes and uh, carbohydrate binding proteins, uh, the, uh, as well as inhibiting them. Uh, the uh, similarity inside between uh, chlorine and hydroxyl uh, has led uh, to uh, research uh, the potential of chlorinated uh, carbohydrate uh, 
around uh, the potential of chlorinated carbohydrates uh, in uh, modifying uh, the chains uh, by uh, inhibiting uh, carbohydrate persisting enzymes. Um, also, uh, some chlorinated carbohydrates have been found to be cytotoxic, uh, which opens up the possibility uh, in uh, some therapeutic use. Uh, some uh, non chlorinated monogamine, so being cytotoxic. However, uh, there have been found the importance of uh, O acetylation. Here you can see the structure of uh, the uh, manazamine, and it was found uh, that the red deoxyl group uh, has to uh, remain uh, un uh, unprotected. Uh, and for uh, the highest uh, cytotoxicity, the blue hydroxyl groups uh, can be saturated or directed in different way. Here, we have studied for uh, uh, the galactosamines and uh, the uh, glucosamines uh, and their cytotoxicity. Uh, for cytotoxicity, uh, we use uh, IC15, uh, which is uh, the number uh, that shows uh, the concentration uh, uh, which kills half of the study ourselves. It means uh, the lower the number, the higher the cytotoxicity. Uh, in this table, uh, you can see some of our uh, results. And uh, it was found that the interaction of chlorine uh, can affect uh, cytotoxicity. Uh, for example, uh, if you look at uh, the first unprotected, uh, non chlorinated uh, it has uh, six times uh, lower cytotoxicity than the chlorinated phenol. And uh, also, uh, you can see that uh, there is a difference in distillation or propionation. For example, the first two compounds uh, of uh, non chlorinated uh, saccharides, uh, there is a big difference. However, uh, if you look at the four dates and uh, the difference is much lower. So, uh, based uh, on this research, we have decided to expand our research to Amazonians. Uh, now, let's move to my project. The aim of my project is to synthesize uh, these products. Uh, you can see patches. Uh, and now, uh, as my work is mostly synthetic, so let's move to the synthetic part. Uh, uh, I have started with uh, uh which is a uh, commercial label. Uh, you can see the structure. Uh, and uh, there's a uh, known synthesis uh, how to prepare uh, the first intermediate. Uh, it consists of four steps. Uh, then uh, I introduced uh, four I to position three. Uh, I used uh, potassium hydrogen chloride. Uh, then I introduced acid and the condensation. Uh, this intermedia uh, was really crucial as uh, it was important uh, for all of the following details. Uh, then the preparation of the uh, compound one. Uh, the first step was uh, opening uh, the internal cell uh, with phenyl uh, trimethyl uh, then I prefer to like installation and uh, conversion from Z to Z. Uh, so you can see the yields of each step uh, were uh, very high. Uh, the conversion uh, to all uh, propionated uh, compound 2 uh, was similar. Uh, the only difference is uh, using uh, propionation instead of installation. Uh, that's the first step to synthesis, and uh, uh, this reaction scheme allows to the product. Um, uh, preparation of compound three, uh, same as uh, as mentioned before. Uh, the only difference was uh, using uh, um, with an innovation instead of distillation, uh, and uh, address the same. Uh, for the differentiated compound, uh, it was uh, different uh, as I had to introduce uh, the fluoride in a position six. Uh, it done uh, by using uh, gas, 
uh, and uh, microwave irrigation. Uh, here you can, uh, in the left bottom corner, you can see uh, the structure of gas. And uh, then also there's solution and uh, as it, uh, uh, I mean, transformation. Conversion uh, to 3.5, uh, here you can see the product. Uh, it's uh, an okay, it's not uh, done yet. Uh, firstly, uh, I had to uh, introduce the foreign in position three. However, uh, it's done uh, with dust and uh, without uh, microwave irradiation. However, uh, the uh, change, uh, the, uh, there, uh, uh, there's the memorization. No, uh, firstly, I had to prepare uh, the other configuration of the Excel group on a uh, position. Uh, I'll talk about the rest of the synthesis uh, later. Uh, to conclude my work, uh, I have successfully uh, synthesized uh, mono and different monodamines in structures, uh, but the synthesis of different monodamine is uh, still in progress. Uh, now let's talk about the future plans. Uh, uh, obviously, I'd like to complete the synthesis of the different monodamine. Uh, uh, here you can see the grid uh, reaction team. So uh, opening the internal star, uh, coordination, and, uh, and uh, again, uh, transformation from as it to uh, line. Uh, then, uh, thanks to our cooperation with uh, Roman Veska uh, from uh, uh, Masai Institute for uh, Oncology, uh, we will determine the cytotoxicity of the prepared anosamines and hopefully, hopefully uh, find uh, some uh, uh, good results and use these products for uh, another mm -hmm. study. And at the end, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And of course, uh, I can't forget uh, my uh, supervisor, Inji Kalban, and all my, uh, all my group. Uh, whom I'd like to thank uh, for uh, every advances and uh, support during my work. Okay, thank you for your interesting talk. And now we have some time for questions. If there are any. Okay, uh, so, well, I will have a similar question <laughs> as I had before. Uh, so did I understand correctly that uh, these components has uh, have the potential of being like uh, cancer treatment? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also uh, maybe you remember yesterday, Vita, uh, my colleague, uh, uh, tell something about the uh, organo, uh, uh, organo uh, metallic compounds. So these compounds should be used as ligands for them and then uh, probably prepare uh, some more mm -hmm. toxic. Mm -hmm. okay. And do you have an idea about the methodology of assessing the cytotoxicity? Uh, it's uh, the, uh, uh, the IC50, which is the they uh, they have some uh, tumor or uh, normal cell lines, mm -hmm. and it studied uh, how many uh, which is the concentration what is the concentration uh, which kills half of the uh, of the cell lines. Okay, so the cells are cultivated yeah. in the yeah. present. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. So any any yeah. other? <laughs> Just two question you have. Quite complicated synthesis with many steps, and yeah. each step has some conversion. I can see between yeah, so 50 and 90 percent. Can you estimate the overall uh, conversion between the, the overall, original substance yeah. and final product? Well, I don't have it in my head, but it's something about uh, 10 percent, I think. Uh, but uh, you can calculate it from uh, just the use of the steps. Yeah. Uh, how many steps does it take in average to perform any complicated uh, separation method? Uh, 
Uh, well, uh, the chromatography, for example, for example uh, was used every every second step. For, for example, after aspiration is not necessary, uh, but average every second step. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Then thank you again. Okay, it's time for uh, master's Oh, and um, since we were told about giving a approach for the preparation of the infants, ionically, and the study of their thermodynamic properties. So, please, this first. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Max Nassen, and I'm a PhD student in Cochitel between the Czech Republic and us. So I'm my supervisor, I do Dr. Margaret Bentova and uh, Professor Sandrine Bocic-Pignon. So today I will speak about the green approach for the preparation of your sources ionic liquid and the seal of their uh, thermodynamic properties. So during this talk, I will follow this outline. So first I will explain you the main context of my PhD project and then uh, explain you the synthesis of the pure-based ionic liquid give you the first result of the physical uh, chemical properties that I have until now and uh, finish by conclusion. So maybe first you are wondering but what is an ionic liquid? An ionic liquid is an association between uh, a cation and an anion and this one can be organic. On this slide you have some example of cation and anion and they have different uh, physical chemical characteristics and that depending on the nature of the cation and the anion. For example, the thermal capacity, the melting temperature under 100 degrees, that can stabilize organic and inorganic compounds. And so here you have an example of one ionic liquid, but they have some uh, problem of toxicity, ecotoxicity, cytotoxicity, and bioaccumulation. And uh, nowadays we have a new kind of category of ionic liquid, the bio uh, based ionic liquids. So uh, you can use, uh, for example, uh, amino acid, alcohol, or sugar as a contrarium or the um, anions. And uh, in our lab, we are more uh, focused about the use of the choline as the kitchen and uh, for the anion, the lactose, or lemonade, for example. So if we look at the literature for the dissolution of the lignin, most of the times uh, we use uh, organic solvent, ionic liquid, or this, uh, so a depth of the solvent, but we use high temperature and high pressure. And the percentage of dissolution is up to 40%. And in our lab, we develop some ionic liquid. So it was wrong. And um, the um, percentage of dissolution was up to uh, 65%. And we're thinking that maybe by the use of the decationic ionic liquid, we will improve the um, uh, capacity of dissolution of um, uh, we will improve the this uh, the capacity of dissolution with uh, this ionic liquid for the lignin. So my PSG is composed of three steps. So the first step is the synthesis of the ionic liquid by the use of the biomass. So on the ionic liquid I form choline and the choline compounds soya. And then uh, so I do that in mass and then I go to Prague here. At DCPF to do the determination of the physical chemical properties of pure and aqueous ionic liquid to do, do the determination of the relationship between the structure and the activity. And when I have done everything, I uh, have done all of this, we select the best candidate to do the dissolution of the lean and extraction of the active components. 
So uh, the synthesis of the biobanks and make liquids. Um, so um, we uh, take the decision to be focused on free on free and start, you can say side of ionic liquid. So here in green, you have the first ionic liquid come from uh, so the choline and um, with uh, the contrarians like that on the And we can say that this one is the short length chain. And we have, so this one uh, from a uh, reaction of esterification between one fatty acid, so here the C11 and the choline chloride. And um, we can say that this one is the um, intermediate phase change. So the fatty acid is involved in the reaction of esterification. And then uh, you have a uh, second reaction to an anionic metathesis with some calculates. We, we obtain this salt, and then you have another one that's ionic metathesis to obtain so the lactate eliminate or um, uh, lactate or eliminate uh, is there, um, ionic liquid variety. And so other structure were compiled by NMR. Uh, and um, elemental uh, elemental analysis and um, uh, uh, infrared too. Oh. Yeah, and so um, for yeah. mm -hmm. to uh, the last one is the bolaform one that I'm going to. Call this one the volatile ionic liquid or the g ionic ionic liquid. So it shows that if we want to have this compound, we can uh, use the last one, the intermediate one, and um, involve this compound into um, cross catalyzed uh, metathesis. But we are thinking about another way of synthesis. So we start from the fatty acid, and this one is involved in the reaction of uh, cross catalyzed metathesis with the groups. <coughs> Catalyst. And so we've obtained the G-acid uh, compounds. So here, the C20, we have good conversion in the air. And after this, we, this uh, G-acid is involved in the reaction of desertification. Uh, then an ionic metathesis, we obtain this salt. And then we have the last uh, ionic metathesis to change the components into lactate or <coughs> So. Um, when I have finished to synthesize my ionic liquid, I'm so here to do the physical chemical uh, to determine the physical chemical properties of pure and aqueous ionic liquid. So um, we are using this uh, parameter like the density, the heat capacity on pure and uh, on pure ionic liquid and ionic liquid mixed with water for uh, in purpose to determine the relationship between the structure and the properties. And this step is very really important because it allows us to optimize the process of dissolution of the, the linen. And so for this um, uh, part, we are really uh, focused on the, the density, the heat capacity, the phase transition measurement, and the TGA. And so why uh, we are using this characteristic? First, the density and the viscosity give us crucial information for the dissolution of the linen. Also, you have to know that ionic liquid are very viscous, so uh, we are going to see also the specific behavior with the water as a cross-solvent. The TGA for the um, temperature deg degradation of the ionic liquid, phase transition give us some information about the temperature of the solution for the, for the process, and the heat capacity gives us some information about the mechanics of the solution and also um, uh, it's uh, to determine the thermodynamic properties. So I have started to do uh, this part last year. And um, first, I didn't know how to use air film. I first uh, do some tests with this ionic liquid, so the dipagritin uh, phosphonium chlorinate. It's also an over based ionic liquid. And so we, uh, I, we, did, uh, we did the measurement of the density and the phase transition. So here on this graphic uh, for the density, you can see that the density decreases when the temperature increases, and the density is uh, less than one, so less than water. And for the phase transition, uh, here on this graphic, you can see that this compound only has uh, one uh, temperature, the phase transition temperature, 
uh, around minus uh, 60 degrees. And so all this uh, method that we have have been explained to other ionic liquid. So the one that I have introduced before. So um, I have done the measurement of the viscosity on uh, uh, the small land change ionic liquids. So the collinium lactate and levinate. So here on this graphic, you can see that uh, the collinium uh, levinate is less viscous than the collinium lactate. And for example, uh, at 25 degrees, we have um, for the collinium levinate uh, around 80 millipascal um, uh, per second. And for the collinium lactate uh, at uh, 25 uh, degrees, it's around uh, 2000. And so, yeah, the viscosity uh, decreases when the temperature increases. <clears throat> we have, uh, have also done the measurement of the heat capacity. And here we have uh, two uh, different ionic liquids. So the one from the reaction of esterification, so it's the intermediate left chain, and you have the short one. And so on this graphic, you can see for the heat capacity that the corneum levinate, uh, like um, for the heat capacity, is you can see it can really process is go very slowly. But for the corneum, um, the and uh, for the corneum C eleven with levinate, they go very fast. Uh, but it's almost the same range of value for the both ionic liquid. And uh, for the phase transition, uh, so it's the same. So the intermediate left change and the small uh, left, uh, the little uh, left change. So for this one, we only observe um, a temperature of light transition uh, around minus, uh, minus 90. So this one, we can say that here's an amorphous ionic liquid. But for the other one, we also have uh, two different. Um, Temperature. So the glass uh, transition one around minus um, nine, uh, 90. And uh, we have a uh, temperature of um, crystallization uh, at uh, minus, uh, around minus 40. So to conclude, uh, since so uh, one and a half years, I have synthesized five uh, different ionic liquids with a moderate to good gas. This process has been improved by the use of the microarrays. So for the volar form, ionic liquid synthesis is still in progress. Uh, for more for the lactate uh, derivative. For the physical uh, chemical properties, uh, it's still in progress. For the moment, I have only done the measurement with of pure ionic liquid. So um, we uh, we can say that for the, I mean, when I say sample, it's the small length chain. Uh, we have done all the viscosity and phase transition for this those one. And um, we uh, have uh, done also for most of them, the phase transition on pure ionic liquid. But I said to how to do the measurement on the lactate one. And um, uh, I have, start to do some heat capacity and density tests when with the ionic liquid, the model one, and I have to explain it for the over uh, choline blue base uh, ionic liquid. And I have also to uh, do the measurements with uh, mixed with water. So thank you for your intention. If you have any questions, and also I would like to thank uh, Jean-Pierre uh, for his help, Jan and Semenat, mm -hmm. and uh, my two supervisor for um, their help too, and uh, the staff of the book institute, so the ECNF and the field ACPF. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? So we have time for discussion. Anyone? <laughs> Various environmental uh, properties of ionic liquids mm -hmm. can those be predicted from from some theory, or you <clears throat> don't need to measure them, build some models. Um, uh, you mean if I have to do a models uh, of 
for the measurement first. Uh, now we have experimental data for various properties. Uh -huh. We can use them to construct some models in those properties under different conditions. Um, so I think uh, yes, we can do that. But uh, for the moment, for the measurement, for the moment, for the ionic this uh, ionic liquid. Is not really some uh, experiment are not really repeatable because they are really uh, hydroscopic. So we have done uh, a lot of measurements, but sometimes with the water inside, it's we don't obtain the same uh, value every time. Mm -hmm. So uh, first we need to uh, work on this, but it's true that uh, if we can have uh, a model and extend everything. To uh, all the ionic liquid, it will be uh, better for us than faster. Mm -hmm. So the novelty here is really the obtaining the data. Yes, because uh, more for this one, this ionic liquid is very really new, and we don't have a lot of uh, data about uh, this one. So uh, it's something like uh, new for uh, the literature. <clears throat> Question about this data on measurement heat capacity. Mm -hmm. This year, all data you can see there is some problem around the 24 degrees. Yeah. Can you explain it? Or is it just one measurement or average of people? So, um, this uh, measurement has been the, uh, done four times, and we apply the mathematics, the analytics too. Uh, but <laughs> it is true that we are really. Um, uh, um, uh, like we, we we don't expect it to have uh, this value for this range of temperature because it's a very linear and at this moment we have something else uh, and um, I sorry but I don't really know why I have this you know, this kind of uh, okay, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a reproducible oh, because you said that you measured four times, yeah. so it's a reproducible. Uh, we have done uh, for this one more, but I have to I have to do it again because I want to see if uh, something uh, has happened. But we have done different measurements, but I have said this ionic liquid is very hydroscopic, so uh, every time the um, Water content is not the same, so we don't have the same behavior because we have some water uh, mixing this uh, ionic liquid. So it's changed the behavior of the ionic liquid and uh, also the value of the heat capacity. And the problem mm -hmm. around 25 is an artifact. We don't know why. But my business will explain maybe why we have this. No idea. <laughs> 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 Okay, if we don't have any more questions, so thank you once more for your presentation. So now we'll follow 